<laughs> All right, uh, Elise is pretty happy because she watched uh, the entire second season of The Real Housewives I of Vancouver. I watch all the, the Vancouver Housewives, all of them. I love it. I, lo- I love it. <laughs> I do. All of them, Elise? I like the show. All right, there I you go. I only like a few of them. Some of them scare me. Uh, we have the lovely and non-scary <laughs> Mary, like. uh, Mary Zilba joining us along with Jane Carsons, who is a professional matchmaker that was featured on the last, the season finale of this season's uh, Real Housewives of Vancouver. Hi, you guys. How are you? Great. Good. Good. Mary, is it a relief to be done uh, or at least to have the shows aired for a second season? You know, I don't think it's ever really done. <laughs> I, <have laughs> right. say, I don't think it's ever really done. You know, you go on social media, it's still happening. Yeah. It never ends. Did actually. you know when you first started, I, I mean, when you signed up for Real Housewives, did you really honestly have any idea what it, what it was going to be like? Not a clue. <laughs> I had no idea. In fact, I thought, this is probably going to be okay. It'll, you know, it'll be a good thing for me to do. And I had some things going on that I thought would be a good, a good platform and good stepping stone for me. And um, I thought, they're never going to get us to fight. It's going to be impossible. Like, how do w- grown women fight? Why? Yeah. What would we I'm fight Mary. about? I'm I'm so nice. I yeah. don't fight. Yeah. <laughs> They'll never fight? get me to fight. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Uh, Jane, you were on the uh, season finale. Mary, uh, you know, like a lot of people, looking for love. Yeah. Uh, you are a professional matchmaker. I am. Uh, how long have you been doing this? Uh, just going on 13 years. Nice. And what we saw with Mary on the uh, final episode is, is you basically go into her home and, and you had a conversation with her about... Uh, you know, her expectations, what she wanted, what she liked. Is that fairly typical for what you do as a matchmaker? Yeah, it's totally typical. It's to get out and meet clients in their own surroundings. That, but it's not typical. I've got camera team all the way around me yeah, when yeah. I do the interview. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for people that, that you know, I, I think everybody has this idea of what a matchmaker is, right? Uh, and, right. and they're probably really antiquated in that. But, but where do you see matchmaking working within a relationship and building a relationship and helping people find that right person? Well, I think it's really hard to, you know, connect with people and then finding somebody who's single on top of it and that's actually going to fit. I mean, we, why not cut to the chase? We, we hire real estate agents to find houses. Why not hire someone to broker your love for you? Mary, how did it feel? Yeah, I mean, having someone come in a third party and, and they ask you, you know, questions about what it is that you like. You, you, I mean, you got to think about it, right? Well, if you saw that episode, it was pretty funny with Robin there. Okay? <laughs> yeah, okay. I love Robin. She's awesome. But boy, she was funny that day. I thought uh, I thought Jane was going to probably lose your marbles. <laughs> listening to <laughs> it was the high, whole package. Yeah, it was high spirited. That's for you don't, sure. Do you, I, I'm guessing you don't usually have other people involved in the interview no, process when you're not matchmaking. At all, not at all. But Robin, you know, came up with this kind of plan. I was a little apprehensive about doing this, and then Robin's like, "Oh no, you got to do it." And so um, I said, "Why not?" Threw a caution to the wind, and then of course she took over the conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And Elise, what did you think of uh, the person that they set uh, well, Mary up with? I was thoroughly impressed because I already had a crush on him. So <laughs> when Brett Wilson walked out, I was like, hey, Did what? you know him before, Mary? Had you met Brett? No, I did not know him. We were introduced via phone like a year before, and yeah. that was it. So I had never actually sat down with him or met him. So Nice. Now, Jane, part of the process, obviously, is uh, you know when you set someone, out, uh, mm-hmm. someone up as a, as a matchmaker, right. Uh, you're, you're just sending them out to kind of learn about someone, right? I mean, there's no stakes. It's like this isn't, you know, there was no expectation that Mary was going to marry Brad. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, no, actually, no. I just kind of connect the dots. They they just kind of fit. I mean, they both were, uh, you know, their careers were the same. They both, you know, on TV, they had, they're both really good parents. I mean, they had a lot in common that, you know, really suggests that they should meet. And he's a nice dragon. He was a nice dragon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> nice and nice go together. Good housewife meets good dragon, right? And he is a nice guy, too. That helps a lot. Uh, how do people, like, sort of get hold of you? I mean, if someone is at that point where, where they, they're finally ready to ad- admit that they need some help, like a real estate agent or anything else, how do, how do they actually get a hold of you? I mean, you must have to be fairly selective about how you're doing things because it's you. It's not a computer program. That's right, right. Well, well I, you know, people contact me. I, I mean, I've been in, here in BC now for the last 13 years. I cover Victoria, Vancouver, and Calgary, so the western western coast, so... I'm uh, flying back and forth quite a bit these days. Nice. You must spend a lot of time just actually meeting people. And and I mean, like, not necessarily as a matchmaker, but just saying hello to people so that you have 
an idea of all these people that are out there, whether well, they're single yeah, attached. Yeah, I have to be the best networker I can be. So the more people I meet, you know, my day is going around visiting people all day long. Nikki single. Hey. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, Whoa. I am. If you got a rock and roll girl out there somewhere that wants a, wants a date with a boy like Nikki. Ah. <laughs> Look, I'm your matchmaker now, Nikki. <laughs> this is pretty good. Jane and I are making this work. Sign him up. Beautiful. Elise, you want any inside dirt on Real Housewives? Now's your chance. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Ask your question. I know. Well, I had to ask her originally because I've dealt with someone very much like Jody, and I had to ask. Like, it's true, right? Like, this is this is real. You and Jody, no. It is real. And so many people ask me, is this real? Can she be that bad? And the answer is absolutely. <laughs> okay. Our show she's is horrific. Real. Like the only yeah, she's <laughs> horrific. But you know what? Everything is real, and I know a couple of my castmates, Jody, Ronnie, Amanda. They're all backpedaling now. Like, oh, it was ed- it, you know, it's all editing, and, and it's yeah. all. That's not true. Because there's it's mean not true. girls. Because if that were true, if you look at the ending credits of our show, we'd have script supervisors, script written by, yeah. written by. None of that's there, and it continues on Twitter every single day. The fighting continues. Oh. I don't speak to Ronnie. I don't speak to Jody. Like if it, if we were a bunch of actors, we'd all be having. You know, we yeah. all be having Teen dinners together. together after. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there's nothing quite like that claim, too, when you've been on a reality show. Everybody who's uh, who comes out of it not looking uh, very good claims the bad edit. Exactly. Right? The, the bad edit. The bad edit, by the way, is a myth. You can't create something <laughs> bad by editing good things well, together. yeah. I mean, I don't think they could have possibly made me into the villain because I, whatever, I didn't really say anything to become the villain. Do you know? I mean, yeah. I, so um, I don't understand Jody's thought patterns. I she's don't know just why a mean she girl that's that, never but... changed. I, I always chalk it up to some sort of jealousy, you know? I never, you know what? People have all said that to me and I think I never, I've never felt that, like that jealousy Where, where's to that make horn? You... Where's that horn? Where's that horn? Where's that horn? You guys are don't, shut down. Don't horn us. No, but in all realists, like she's not a nice lady. It's a terrible way for somebody to to handle themselves and like the fact that she does it on TV that's crazy drop well down. we've had arguments before Just drop, drop, I... drop those microphones down you guys are done now the oh gossip God, okay, session keep going and going. the gossip <laughs> session will continue <laughs> off air thanks for joining us on the bro show hopefully Jake's back tomorrow I hope you feel better big papa and uh, we will see you again on the bro show fresh and early 5am be here